You're in the film. All eyes on me. Right. A very mixed kind of bag when it comes to how people are reacting to this film. Right. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, look, were looking at Straight Outta Compton as a bar because the bar was set so high for Straight Outta Compton. Right. And this film comes out, and I think I remember I heard an interview with you where you go, I think you said like a, one of the guys you were writing your book with saw it, he said, oh, it's, it's way better than Straight Outta Compton. Correct. You know, the movie comes out, and some people love it, mm-hmm. but you also get a lot of a lot of people who said that they didn't like it, mm-hmm. more so than a Straight Outta Compton. Right. Um, you played yourself in the movie. You're also a consultant in the right. movie. Um, when you look at the film, as a film, how would you rate it? One to ten. Um, I loved it. You know, so ten. It's it's gonna be up there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I and I say that because looking at it, you know, when I'm seeing it, outside of the 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 period that I was in and consulted about. But the early years, it looked exactly like the stories that Tupac used to tell me. So I think that they were dead on with, you know, with um, how they recreated the the, um, the locations or whatever you want to call it. Um, and also the fact that I was watching it being filmed and asking questions. I understand that when you make a movie, you have to make a movie. So. There's no way, you know, I laugh when people say like, hey, it was inconsistencies or this didn't really happen. Well, you show me anybody, a, a movie about anybody's life that everything happened exactly the way that it happened. And I always talk about, you know, as I was telling you earlier, us coming from NWA, I was close to the situation. So I know what really happened. As I'm watching the movie, I was think, you know, and I watched it with someone who was actually in it, and he was pissed off the, the way that other people are pissed off about. T- he was pissed, man, that didn't happen. That didn't, and I like, I know, man, but it's a good movie. You know, I'm, I'm laughing at the things that I, you know, that I know didn't or did happen. The same way, it's kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll, and just to jump in front of you in case you're gonna ask me, you know, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what people like, uh, say, a Jada Pinkett are, you know, what they're, problem is, not problem, I'm sorry, because everybody has a right to their feeling, and of course, they were very, very close. But I'm just kind of wondering what her real problem is with the film, because if it's just the fact of, well, this didn't happen exactly that way. Well, you know, we shot a scene for the movie. It's not, you know, where we uh, recreated the Juice audition, right? Well, in real life, it happened, we were in the limo going, and that's when I was rehearsing with them and asking, well, in the movie, to make to make use of the space, they did, they recreated that scene right outside the audition room where we were sitting there. Now, okay, it didn't happen exactly that way, but we get it, Yeah, you know, to show that it, the story happened. And even Atron, the manager, H, was Atron was the Tupac's manager, you know, his role in the film kind of encompassed all of Tupac's managers, you know, because Tupac had Atrian, he had um, Man Man, Charles Fuller, he had uh, Watani, you know, and then I don't know who his manager was during the death row times, but. I think it was Shook. Maybe Shook. Yeah. Well, you know, Atrian pops up throughout the movie, and I asked the question about that, but. It, what, it, what was explained to me actually makes sense. It's like he symbolizes the manager role in that movie because every 10 scenes, you can't have just a new guy pop up and be like, <laughs> right. hey, we, we got the money. You know, then you have to explain who it is. Yeah. So that being said, while Tiny was on set when we were filming it, he, he didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's like a lot of people are self-serving and they want it to be about them and for them. Whereas just kind of like, okay, he didn't actually read that letter to me, but you, we're just trying to yeah. show that he had those feelings for you and that a letter, a letter was written. So I interviewed Napoleon okay. from The Outlaws. 
and he chose not to be in the film. Okay. Whereas, um, you know, Noble and Edie were in the film. All right. And, and his reasoning is is that uh, he said the family was not happy and mm. was not behind uh, the film. Okay. Um, you know, Pac's sister, I guess, was not happy with it. Pac's mother, I heard, was not happy with it, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. Um, were you aware of any of these issues, or was that just not something you really dealt yeah, with? Yeah, I was aware, of, you know, things were being said, and from my understanding is, uh, the initial kind of conflict between um, Afeni and the estate and the movie or whatever, it was kind of some, some some things that had to do with the attorneys and and the, the business workings of it. Yeah. Um, but I do know that as I'm watching the film being made, it's they are you know they were really careful about how they did things and and to the best of their ability try to um, respect Pac's legacy and to do anything and everything that they could to, to be as right and on point as they could about the situation. Um, it's a trip when, you know, when there are disputes like that, when you know everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I, I love Afani, and then, but I, also, I know LT for, for many, many years, and, yeah. and I, I hear both sides, and then I hear kind of like what happened behind the scenes. And I know the, some of the players who were involved in, the, in the, the confusion and they were removed. So when people say, well, she sued the whatever. Well, it was a lawsuit, but it was because of some things. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard the lawyer was trying to do something. Yeah, so you know, and I'm not going to yeah. throw that person under the exactly. bus or whatever. At the end of the day, man, I'm glad the movie got made. Man. I, I enjoyed watching it, you know, knowing the story, knowing most of the story already, mm -hmm. I enjoyed seeing it played out. Uh, you know, Demetrius Ship Jr. I he thought did a did, fantastic job. Did a great job. Um, yeah, Demetrius, he he killed it. Yeah, he, he did and, his know, thing. And I also told him too. I said, when this movie comes out, be prepared because you know, Tupac fans are are for special, now. It's a different special breed. Yeah. yeah, it's a different beast. That's why I'm saying, like you know. The same things that happened with Straight Outta Compton is a different level of fandom and and, and attention. Like Tupac fans are maybe maybe Beyonce fans might be a little higher. I don't know. If no, I'll say Tupac fans because you know, Tupac whatever. has a social message, right? You know, because I think you had mentioned there's like Tupac tribes in Africa. Yeah, and so stuff it's, like. it's there's people no Beyonce that are, tribes are that or, yeah. that attached to them to where if I, I told Demetrius and I tell people I was like if. Jesus Christ played Tupac, he wouldn't be good enough. You know, because to them, nobody's good enough to play. Like, it shouldn't be touched. You know, so you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm ac accepting of anybody's opinion. They have a right to voice it. But I dare anybody to challenge me on what happened and what didn't happen as I'm watching it. And it was a good movie. It was, it was close enough. I know the things that did or didn't, and I know the things that were done yeah. to make a good movie, to put it together. But it was, it was as accurate as I needed to be. Right. You know, it's like, of course, you know, there's not like you said. You wish that they would have focused on a period, and elaborated on it, just a period to to kind of get the full um, story and essence of a particular period of his life. Well, when you try to put it all in two and a half hours, which was long for a movie, right. you know, you can't put, you can't get deep into his relationship with Big Stretch, which was important. Yeah. You know, you can't, you know, him and MC Bree were really close. Yeah. But you can't, you can't get it all in. You know, I could sit there and complain about things that I wanted, that I think the world should know that between our relationship, but. Yeah, which wasn't really shown. I mean, you were there, but you, you didn't, there, there was very little interaction between you. Yeah, and you know, and I kind of, like, you know, just, I do appreciate LT and Benny because when I did mention things, um, they listened, yeah. you know, if, because I, I, I needed to, or at least I hoped that people understood, like at least with our period, that was the most, um, 
that was the most enjoyable, fun part of his career in life because th we shared a period where he was actually realizing his dreams. When he was with us, that's when he did his first album, his first record, then first album, first movie. You know, we saw him realizing his dreams and that was special, but the thing about it was, throughout that time, you know, me and Pac's relationship was always about talking shit, joking. We laughed 80% of the time. Yeah. You know, only time we didn't is if when he woke up and didn't have no weed. <laughs> then it's a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, man. He, you know, he had me looking for weed just so he can get out of my face. Crazy. But we were always just, it was always about joking. So I tried to express that and then they, you know, in the scene in the movie, they they showed it briefly as much as they could, but you know there was a whole nother side that probably wasn't shown enough. And but that's just me and my interaction with them. Right. But it didn't have to for me because I understood that it's a movie and it's a lot to try to cram into two and a half hours. He did so much, and I and I think that they, I think that the movie did a great job of kind kind of reliving with the audience the events that kind of happened that that led up to it you know it's yeah. it's a it's a movie like anybody old enough that went that was around at the time we already know what happens you know you're not going to pretty much learn anything new but you kind of watch it and see the steps that were taken like the the steps that were taken where he maybe should have done something different it's kind of like you have to look at it also as a cautionary tale you know where where would you have not done that or where should he, he have done something different that maybe wouldn't have landed him in yeah. you know where he ended up no, so absolutely. instead of people going to see it to see if they can see him wearing a green shoe where he should have wear a red shoe he didn't wear a green shoe that day you know what i mean that's right. kind of whack to me like watch it yep no I, everyone should watch it if you're a fan of tupac i believe so you should go see it Yep. You know, if you hear good reviews, bad reviews, if you're a fan of Tupac, you should go see it. And just if like you're, if you're and, a and I do have to say, if you're a real fan of Tupac, and just like I'm talking about the the things that, that weren't in the book, I mean, in the movie, I do have a book where I do actually elaborate oh. on some of those things. The book, Hype Man, The Money Beast Story. Right. You know, where you want to get the real story. Right. Holler at the kid.